chat with me. Come on and talk to me. I really wanna know what you think. I wanna hear your truth. I wanna see what you see. Come on and talk to me. The girl lovely tea in this green room streets. Hey, you guys. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. I see y'all jamming out in the chat. Y'all crack me up every week when that song plays. Thank you all so much for joining me this evening for this live stream discussion. I'm super excited. I have my girl, Lady J, with me. Lady J, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Okay, let's hope that my headphones are working. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Oh, you sound, you sound perfect. 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 Yay! <laughs> cool. So I hope everybody's doing good. So I wanted to put this together um, because a lot of people watched the Static Major documentary that I did um, and really enjoyed it and took a, a, a lot from the video. A lot of folks, you know, a lot of younger people didn't even know he existed. <laughs> they had assumed like everything was done by like Timbaland um, in their production. And I think this brought back a lot of memories for people as well. So what did you think from the from the documentary and what were you able to take away from it? Well, I'll start by saying thanks for doing it, because I know it takes a lot of time to go in and edit and pull those receipts and dig in the crevices of the Internet <laughs> to find stuff, right. right? And but, I, you know, as I was following along with you and I had said this to you, I was just like, man, like you filled in some gaps for me that I kind of had forgotten because just like you, I was a mom, I was out here hustling, working, doing the thing. And there's just some things that you just kind of miss. Right. But you mm -hmm. really hit on a lot of good stuff that I can't wait to discuss and see what other people have to say. Definitely. It was really good. Really, really good. Thank you. You know, like I was saying, it was it was hard. And I really didn't want to tell anybody I was working on the documentary because people could say, like, what are you working on this month? And I didn't want to say because I'm like, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to like just tie it together because there's not a lot of information on him because this was before the social media era. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, before Twitter and, you know, Instagram and Facebook, Facebook might have been around, but he wasn't on that. So it's not like I can dig into those archives and find out more. And the information on him is really limited. So I thought this would be a perfect way to not only speak on static, but also speak on people in the industry who don't get their shine, who don't get their credit, because like I was saying in my live stream yesterday, I think for this generation, a lot of them, they've been almost indoctrinated to only look at the celebrity and look at the face of, of the star of the music. When, you know, when we were younger, we read through those leaflets that were in the CD covers and you know, uh, tape covers, like we read those inserts. We got to know who produced what, who sang on what. And that's not really available. Like, granted, they do have some credits like on Apple and on Spotify, but with Apple, the way that you see that is like when you click on the lyrics and then you scroll all the way down to the bottom. But, you know, if the yeah. kids aren't doing that, you're going to miss it. You know, whereas mm -hmm. we had that physical booklet. Yeah, it was something about holding that book in your hand. And I guess because, you know, for the for the kid here, you used to have to go to the card catalog desk to, to find a book in the library. <laughs> I'm telling my age, like just holding on to that piece of, you know, <laughs> paper and just kind of reading through that makes so much difference. And it bonded you differently with the artist. And like the, in your clip that you use with Beyonce and she's sitting here talking about like, you know, so invested in the personal life because that's the entertainment now because there's nothing else left right um mm -hmm. but yeah you made it you made some good points yeah it was something about having that that little piece of leaflet and going through those lyrics because you couldn't get them online and i guess it's so easy to do it now so maybe that doesn't matter i don't know Right. So we're going to go ahead and take on some calls. So if you guys want to call and state your opinion on the documentaries on Static Major, you know, what songs of his did you like that he produced or wrote? Um, and then also just about music in general. You know, so we're going to talk about a lot of things tonight. I'm going to start bringing people up on stage. Just raise your hand and make sure that you're muted until um, until you're caught on. So let's go ahead and start with. Um, let's see here. 
We got a lot of people got their hands raised. Oh, fabulous. Okay, let's start with, let's see here, who's on stage? Um, Keandrea Wells, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Hello, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. How are you? Yeah, I'm so excited. I love you, love you so much. Um, Thank so you. That you couldn't find any of his music because um, he was out long before, you know, the whole social media wave came. And I remember this specifically. As soon as you said Static Major, I thought about the Lil Wayne Lollipop song. Mm. And at the end of that video, they announced that he had died. Right. And, I, and That's I was, how a lot of people found out about it was at the very end. Um, you see at the end of the credits, it's like, you know, rest in peace, Static. It's like, wait, he died? <laughs> exactly. So I was, I was like, he, he made the song. He, he's gone. I thought, like, was he supposed to feature on? I didn't know who he was at all. And then I just started looking into it. Just like, who is this man? Like, why is they crediting him on, on at the end of the song? Like, he had to have been, you know, someone to be credited, especially how big that album was for during that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's all I want. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, thank you for calling in, sis. All right. Okay, let me go ahead and bring on... Even Stervens, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Hey, lovely T, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing good. So I watched the documentary. I was very impressed. And I'm, like I said, I was so impressed the way you put everything together. Because I remember I was like a senior in high school. And I, I was mm-hmm. watching the video with my friend. And then like, he died. I'm like, what? Like, he's not going to enjoy this beautiful music he just put out. And I was I was hurt by that. So, right. as I was watching the documentary, I didn't recognize he have write a lot of songs, especially the Aaliyah album, the La- Aaliyah. He mm-hmm. had written at least nine songs from that album, and I was not I was not aware of that at all. And I yes. and I didn't realize the impact he had in the industry at all. And I had to say thank you for actually bringing that to the surface. And another thing I want to say is the fact is I was very disappointed with the music industry. Because the mm-hmm. thing is, when Little Wayne was a win, winning a award, it was like the Little Wayne. It was no future at all, as if he was not even there at all. They did not acknowledge the fact he, he was a future on that song. And I'm like, why would they do that to him, especially when he played a major part of that song? And I was very disappointed the fact they did that to him. No, I definitely agree. And I think that was the issue that a lot of people, especially in Louisville, had with it. It, it after a while it just became Lil Wayne's song. Like nobody ever even ties that song to Static Major. Exactly, because I'm like, whenever you do a future, it's like it, it, I just very I, I was just looking disappointed, like with the MTV, especially BET for being a black entertainment. And the fact is mm-hmm. they were able to go and do that and say Little Wayne song when they know another artist has contributed to that song. And I'm like, especially if you if you offer black artists, why are you trying to delete this person from history? Exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, even for calling in. We got a lot of calls coming in. It was very good talking to you. So he made some really good points, Lady J. Because you would think as BT, they would have did some type of tribute to him because he wasn't, you know, maybe he wasn't Michael Jackson, but his pen game was on point and he wrote a lot of iconic, uh, iconic songs and there was no type of memorial or tribute. You know what? I thought about that too. And even thanks for making that point. Like this man did so much behind the scenes. It's not to say that there weren't other artists that did the same, but the impact he had you know, looking at that um, that interview with uh, Vlad and the man mm-hmm. breaking down, couldn't even compose himself. You could literally see him going in his mind and replaying moments in his life mm. where this man had such an impact. Like, what fun did they have? What what stuff did they do? You know, that writing process, you a creator, you get it. The process mm-hmm. of creating is so intimate. And for him to sit yeah. down and break down and cry like that, you mean to tell me there weren't other people in the industry that didn't feel that way, that didn't have the juice to make sure that this man got some type of achievement award? It, it kind of harkens back to what you said, uh, you know, what you put in the piece about how his wife and that whole genuine piece and that fake love and mm-hmm. that fake friend shit. That's all that is. But good point right. made, though. Good point made. Good point made. 
Yeah, he made some really good points. Let me go ahead and bring on Shiana B. Shiana, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Hi, lovely T. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. How are you? Good. So I'm from Louisville, and I was wait, wait, say, wait, wait, say it one more time, Louisville. That's how they say it. Say it again. Louisville. I love how y'all say it. Louisville. So I'm from Louisville, and. I knew a lot about that static major and in my like when I was in like late elementary early middle school uh, the radio was still in and the interviews that you were playing I remember it was so much talk in the city and another mm-hmm. thing that I want to hit on that's even deeper with the Little Wayne situation is if anybody else is from Louisville they can quote me as well and um, correct me but every time he's supposed to come in Louisville to perform, he never shows up. Who little Wayne to this day, right? Yes. Like I've it, heard that, but I thought it was just, you know, internet fodder. So that's no, true. No, I've been no, I've no. heard that. Yes. Yes. They book him. And mind you, yes, Lil Wayne is very talented. He's he's like an icon. We we I grew up on Lil Wayne. Every time he comes, I've literally bought tickets. He's supposed to come. Uh, for a derby, he had, they had this big thing. It sold out literally because of Lil Wayne. Didn't show up. Every time he's supposed to come, he does not show up. That is weird. It huh. is, it's so weird, mind you. Now that, and, and that's funny that you say that because, like, I was trying to show in the documentary when I bought everybody back to, like, 2009, 2010, that whole sacrifice thing was really it really like grew legs because of Lil Wayne's actions towards Static. Like after a while, people were like, "Well, damn, did he get the man killed? Like, why are you so secretive and not wanting to acknowledge him?" And you fast forward, what, like fourteen years later, he still has not come and performed not one time in Louisville. No, what? no, wow. he has not came one time. And it's really funny, like not funny, but it's just really weird because. Static is like a huge thing here. And I know people who have known him personally. He also um, did a lot of work with like organizations specifically with like music here. And he's Mm -hmm. what I've heard. I've never met him personally, but everyone has always said he's such a genuine person. And Mm -hmm. I just don't understand how Lil Wayne can't give him any type of credit. And I really hope that the sacrificing thing is not true, but it's just so weird how... He doesn't, I've literally never heard Wayne say his name, really. Yeah, yeah. And all these years, and that was his number one yeah. biggest hit. That was his crossover, because like I showed in the documentary, I mean, we all listened to Lil Wayne. We was here for Bling Bling and, you know what I'm saying, um, hot, the hot Boys, and we know all those songs. Um, but at the end of the day, that lollipop is what gave him his commercial success. So for him to not be, you know, somewhat indebted, you know, to Static and Louisville is just, it's, it's just weird to me. It's very strange. He's never given back. Like, I mean, we have Bryson, we have Jack Harlow. That literally every time a celebrity comes to Louisville, they always either shout out Bryson Tiller, they shout out Jack Harlow. Little Wayne has never given not one thing to Louisville he he didn't like donate I'm pretty sure his wife started something for static in memory for him he has Mm -hmm. not done one thing at all like at all and it's it's my it's mind-blowing that he hasn't even came and performed here and you play that song and you play any song that he's written in Louisville with like a older not an older crowd but maybe like middle age crowd they go crazy Mm -hmm. oh yeah we love us some static honey yeah, so <laughs> I, 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 I was really surprised. I was honestly so surprised when it popped up that you were doing that. Doc- I was like, oh, my God. So I, I watched it immediately. And I know I sent uh, I was telling my friends about it and some people were commenting. I think they're trying to send the link to his wife as well. Okay. Yeah, I've seen some people trying to tag her. I didn't know if it was appropriate for me to like slide in her DMs like here, you know, I did a doctor. You know, I don't know. I don't know the process. She's what I've heard, she's she's really sweet and okay. she loves when you give her credit. So I I, okay. I would I would I would definitely like, you know, just say, Hey, I've done some research and yeah, I, I you've done a really got good job from a Louisville native standpoint. Everything that you hit on was honestly like 
spot on. Thank you so much. That makes me feel so good. And I'm so glad that Louisville is really loving the doc. Because like I said, I had to call a few friends and talk to a few friends from Louisville who knew Static and, you know, some who knew of him. And it's a, it was almost like bringing back old memories. It was almost like yesterday for them, you know, and they were just talking about, you know, the things that they thought and, and it brought them back to that, you know, era of 2009, 2010, and, you know, just what was going on around that time. And to this day, his death does not sit well with a lot of people at it all. It sit well with a lot of people in Louisville as well. And just from a different perspective, in Louisville, we have these really big signs. So, like, a lot of famous people, um, you'll see, there like, these big signs on really big buildings. And I think they were trying to get him one. They still haven't gotten him one yet. Jennifer Lawrence has one here, and she wasn't even born in Louisville, so... <laughs> Oh, yeah, they give Jennifer Lawrence a lot of props, honey. Well, yes. thank you so much, Cheyenne, for calling in. It was really good talking to you. Thank you. All right. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.